subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Anyone who has cats would know that cats are crazy for catnip. The internet is filled with videos of cats rolling around in catnip or eating it and then acting high and nuts. Catnip is known to produce a euphoric effect in cats and so far it's been a bit of a mystery how exactly this happens. However, newer research does offer some new clues. In this video, we'll take a look at this new research that explores the neural pathways in the brain which trigger an opioid-like response among cats as well as the evolutionary benefit of cats being attracted to plants like catnip and silver vine. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Catnip is a very common herb that is found all over the world and is a member of the mint family. Cats can eat catnip, they can sniff it, they can rub against it, they can roll in it and all of this gives cats a sense of euphoria and it's perfectly safe unlike addictive drugs in humans. Most cats love catnip. Unfortunately, there are some that don't react exactly in the most adorable way that you want them to. I have two cats and they just have average reactions to catnip and I'm trying to find an alternative. But the plant works for most cats and triggers a sense of joy and high in cats. There are also other plants such as the silver vine which is found mostly in Asia, in China and Japan which also have these chemical compounds called iridoids which activate pleasure circuits in cats. Now, a new study that's published in the journal Science Advances, which studied both catnip as well as silver vine, has understood better the mechanism that activates these opioid reward pathways in the cat's brains and has further managed to find an evolutionary significance for these plants. So how do human and animal brains work on drugs? The opioid pathways in our brains as well as in animal brains are reward pathways. Pathways basically mean how neurons or nerve cells carry information through our brain and trigger feelings and emotions. These are actually simply just called reward systems as well. Why are they called so? Because they increase our motivation and our craving for something that acts as a reward which gives us a sense of satisfaction, of gratification and of pleasure primarily. The core component of these rewards is pleasure. So we feel ecstatic, we feel extremely joyful, we feel happy and blissful and euphoric. And, of course, that feeling is addictive. Who does not want to feel happy and content all the time? So we keep craving for these motivational rewards and when it comes to drugs, we can get addicted to it. Of course, the same kind of pathways are also triggered by natural healthy processes and other stimuli such as exercise or chocolate or sex. Now, back to cats. What we understand is that catnip activates this very system in cats' brains. For them too, catnip and silver vine act like a drug, but they are not equivalent to opioids or drugs that we talk about in the traditional sense of the word. They are not like heroin or morphine to humans. Cats can in fact eat catnip on a daily basis and it even has health benefits for them. It is completely safe and it's non-addictive. Cats do not get addicted to catnip. The new study that we're discussing today came out of Japan and the Japanese researchers studied two plants, both catnip as well as silver vine and their effects on cats. Silver vine, like we mentioned before, is found primarily in China and Japan and is in fact even more potent than catnip. In catnip, the main compound that activates this euphoria is called nepetalactone, whereas in silver vine, it's a very similar compound called nepetalactol. So what's the neuroanatomy here and how does it physically work in the structure of our brain? This is a huge oversimplification, but just like how we understand the coronavirus latches onto receptors in our body, the spike protein goes and attaches to ACE2 receptors and this acts like a key entering a lock. 
or like two pieces of a puzzle fitting together this is a similar mechanism to what happens with these chemical compounds as well which basically enter our system and go and attach themselves to receptors in different parts of our brains the pleasure centers of brains are also called hedonic hotspots and these are the ones that stimulate the feeling of pleasure and mediate the levels of pleasure that we and other animals experience this is how these compounds found in catnip and silver wine also work on cat brains and these plants don't just work on our regular domestic house cats they work on all different kinds of cats as well including big cats the researchers in this study actually tested a large variety of cats they used 25 cats in the lab lab cats they used 30 feral cats they used a jaguar a leopard and two lynxes and how it was conducted was like this they soaked a paper infused with nepetalactol and placed it along with a plain paper without the compound which acted as a control Each of these cats spent lots and lots of time with the two papers and of course they chose to hang around and roll around in the paper that was soaked with the chemical. All of the cats that were used in the study went and rubbed themselves up against the paper that soaked with the nepetalactol. And the authors also discovered what we kind of already knew was that this worked only for cats it did not work for other animals they also tried this on dogs as well as mice and none of the other animals reacted to these compounds just the cats did but to identify the right kind of compound that triggered this reaction they first isolated all bioactive compounds from these plants that have the potential to trigger such reactions and then they tested each of them with the cats and then they were able to isolate the nepetalactol specifically additionally they also checked blood samples of the cats for endorphins Endorphins as we know are hormones that are released during happiness and pleasure again such as after exercise or sex or chocolate or drugs they found that the cats showed elevated levels of endorphins after rolling around in these chemical compounds as compared to before furthermore when the researchers gave the cats a chemical called naloxone which is a drug that inhibits the effects of opioids the cats no longer wanted to go and rub themselves up against the nepetalactol soaked paper naloxone is also used in humans to treat opioid overdoses but one of the most important and crucial findings that came out of this study was that these plants not only make cats high and make them happy and activate these reward pathways but they actually have an evolutionary benefit of protecting the cats it turns out that nepetalactone and other such chemicals actually give cats a chemical defense against mosquitoes Basically if the cats rub themselves up against the plant it is equivalent to them rubbing odomos on themselves the plants are a mosquito repellent and also likely a repellent for other insects during the course of the experiment the researchers discovered that once the cats started to rub on the compound and by extension the plants significantly fewer mosquitoes landed on them a lot of the times we do find with evolution that something we tend to like a lot can also benefit us and benefit the thing that we like this goes hand in hand symbiotically this similar logic applies to catnip and silver wine as well These plants have induced this euphoric effect on cats for about 10 million years now genetically speaking according to these researchers so what benefit could it potentially give that makes cats want to keep rubbing against them it turns out that their insect repellents and they repel mosquitoes and maybe likely other kinds of parasites even maybe bacteria and virus as well The researchers in fact also tested and verified this by using both paper as well as actual plants and then observing to see how many mosquitoes landed on cats that have rubbed themselves on these plants and the number was significantly fewer in fact they theorized that this could actually be a generic repellent not just specific to mosquitoes and insects but also other parasites like we mentioned This was according to them probably the most important finding of the study because this repellent nature acts not just on cats but it seems to act on humans as well. 
In fact, Dr. Miyazaki wanted to test this out. He was the lead author of this study. And what he did was he rubbed one of his hands with these iridoids and then exposed both his arms to mosquitoes. He found that the one that was covered with the chemical attracted far fewer mosquitoes. So these compounds from catnip and silvervine that benefit cats can in fact also benefit other animals and humans. And now his team is working on not just identifying the genes that are responsible for this kind of response in cats, but also extracting these insect repellent compounds from these plants and then finding ways to use them for humans as well as our furry friends to keep all of us safe. Thank <laughs> you.